Wi-Fi Basics 802.11 is a group of standards for LAN, Wi-Fi wireless networks created and maintained by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. The basic differences between individual standards from the group are operating bands and maximum transfer rates. 802.11 BG standards use 2.4 GHz band, 802.11A uses 5 GHz band, 802.11N can be implemented in 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz band. The maximum transmission rates vary from 11 megabits per second for 802.11b standard to 600 megabits per second for 802.11n standard. Legal regulations. In each country, the frequency bands and maximum transmission power of wireless devices are determined by the state. It is noteworthy that the 5 GHz band is divided into two ranges, for indoor and outdoor applications with different maximum output power. Building a wireless link, keep the line of sight between the antennas. Remember that the Fresnel zone, named after a French physicist, is also an area actively participating in transmission of radio signal energy. The shape of this area is an ellipse in longitudinal section, and circle in cross section. Radius of this circle is a function of the ratio of distances of the cross section to the antennas. It has the maximum value in the middle of the link. The importance of the first Fresnel zone comes from the fact that almost all energy of the signal is conveyed via this space. In practice, no obstacles in the central 60% of the first Fresnel zone ensure that the power loss can be neglected. Before purchasing equipment to build a link, you should first calculate its energy balance. The necessary parameters include the output power of the transmitter attenuation of connectors and cables, and gain of the antennas. The attenuation of an RF connector is usually about 0.5 dB. Summing up these values in an appropriate way, you'll get the final result, the power of the signal at the input of the receiver. The resulting signal strength should be compared with the sensitivity of the receiver, usually contained in its specifications as a list of input level and max transfer rate pairs. Of course, these are theoretical values which may slightly differ from the actual results. Currently, long coaxial cables between the transceivers and the antennas are usually eliminated. Active devices are mounted directly in antenna boxes to minimize the connection loss. So, in comparison with the preview, a node of a wireless network, for example, transceiver, access point, or wireless adapter, consists of the following components wireless module, transceiver card, antenna cord, connecting the wireless module with antenna, RF connectors, antenna, converting electric signals into radio waves and vice versa. Each component is characterized by an impedance of 50 ohms. Basic antenna parameters include, antenna pattern informing about directional dependence of the strength of the radio waves, antenna gain, a unitless measure combining antenna efficiency and directivity, compared to an isotropic antenna. Antennas having higher gain can be used over longer distances, however there is a higher risk of interference. A wireless link, network can use vertical or horizontal polarization, both, all antennas must have the same polarization. Based on antenna patterns, it is easy to determine its gain for any direction in the half-power beam. The patterns are given for the vertical and horizontal planes. Taking into consideration radiation angle, Wi-Fi antennas can be divided into directional and base devices. Due to a small size, the most popular directional antennas have panel construction. Yagyada antennas are optionally used in 2.4 GHz band. High gain of parabolic antennas is optimal for long-range links. Base antennas are divided into sector antennas, with radiation angle usually between 90 and 180 degrees, and omnidirectional antennas, 360 degrees. The transceiver and antenna are connected via a short cable terminated with an RF connector. The most common connectors are SMARP, used in devices operating at 2.4 GHz, and N type connectors, used in devices operating in 5 GHz band. 
coaxial cables linking transceivers with antennas are important parts of Wi-Fi systems, especially in the case of longer sections. The most important parameter of an RF cable for LAN is the characteristic impedance, that is 50 ohms. Another major parameter is the attenuation of the cable, which depends on frequency. This parameter is expressed in decibels per kilometer, decibels per 100 meters or decibels per meter. Coaxial cables linking transceivers with antennas are important parts of Wi-Fi systems, especially in the case of longer sections. The most important parameter of an RF cable for LAN is the characteristic impedance, that is 50 ohms. Another major parameter is the attenuation of the cable, which depends on frequency. This parameter is expressed in decibels per kilometer, decibels per 100 meters or decibels per meter. The nodes of LAN, Wi-Fi networks are access points. They usually can operate in one of several operation modes with different functionality. Access point mode is used to change a wire transmission medium to the wireless and vice versa. A typical example is a home access point with built-in router allowing for wireless connection of laptops equipped with wireless cards, adapters. AP client mode is used by LAN adapters connecting wirelessly with the access point. The adapters are used for example in laptops, for providing wireless connectivity. Repeater mode is used to extend a Wi-Fi network. Bridge mode is used to build wireless point-to-point -point links, usually designed to transmit data from one sub-network to another. Wireless distribution system mode enables wireless interconnection of multiple access points without a need for additional cabling. Thank you for giving this matter your attention. In conclusion, we propose a short test that will examine your knowledge of the subject. Thanks to the background material on the top of the screen the task will be easier. A final test. Match the maximum dated transfer rates to the Wi-Fi standards.